Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about how to design a tiny URL. This is my first design video and I picked this question because it's an extremely popular interview question. Why it's a popular interview question? There are a couple of reasons. First, the problem statement is extremely simple which is you have to design a service where user will give you a long URL and you need to return a short URL and when he gives you the short URL you need to give him the original long URL. The second reason interviewers love this question is because uh, this question has some very interesting challenges specifically trying to design it at scale. So before we go into the solution, there are a couple of things I need to talk about. First, design questions are extremely subjective in nature. So take this solution with a grain of salt, think more about it and try to come up with your own solution. Second, I might not be able to cover all the areas uh, around this question so hopefully I'll try to make individual videos in the future covering those areas. Third, I would like to know your feedback, specifically how you would have designed this question if you were asked this in the interview. And finally, I would like to thank my peers at work and my friends who helped me design this, who helped me come up with the solution for this question. So next, let's see how we are going to design this how you're going to design tiny URL. When an interviewer is asking you this question, I'm fairly certain he's not looking for a solution where you take a longer URL, generate a shorter URL for it, store it in a map, and then return the longer URL from the map. Interviewer is asking you this question to test your knowledge on scalability and durability. This solution of using a map is neither scalable nor durable. When I'm designing a service, I think about uh, these things straight away. First is API. API is how the user is going to interact with my service. Second is application layer and third is the persistence layer. For this question, API is extremely simple. You have a create tiny which takes a long URL and returns you the tiny URL and then you have get long which takes the tiny URL and returns you the long URL. If you need to add features like expiration time or ability to provide shorter URL, you can easily do that and you can easily do that by updating this API. So we won't spend a lot of time on the API and next let's jump on the application layer. When interviewer asks tiny URL question, I think he's looking for one of the two things. First is how do you generate a tiny URL which is unique? Remember the actual URL could be hundreds of characters long while we need to generate a tiny URL which is seven or eight characters long and it has to be unique. Or interior is interested in uh, seeing how you would design the persistence layer, basically where and how you would, do, you would store the short URL and the long URL. In this video, I'm going to concentrate mostly on the first part, which is how do you generate a tiny URL, which is uh, as unique as possible and defer the discussion of persistence layer for some other video. Having said that, I will discuss a little bit about persistence layer in the end. So when interviewer asks you tiny URL question, at the minimum, he's expecting you to have a block diagram like this. Let's quickly run through this uh, diagram. So here is a customer or a client. He talks to the service through either REST API or HTTP or bunch of other open source software available in the market. And if you don't know what REST is, I highly recommend reading about it. Customer talks to the service uh, through a load balancer. So load balancer is the front end for the service. Load balancer is either a software or a software plus hardware combination, which uh, at the at the minimum does the delegation of uh, delegation of the request to one of the worker threads. Load balancer could also do a bunch of other fancy things. It totally depends of depends on how much money you're willing to pay to get the load balancer. This worker threads or this worker hosts, what they do is they will take the URL, generate the tiny URL for it, and store both of them in the persistence layer. And when the get request comes, he'll take the he'll get the longer URL for the shorter URL and return it to the client. We'll also have a caching layer, which uh, which could be memcache or Redis or a bunch of other caches available in the market and we'll discuss a little bit about them in the end of the video. So next, let's come to the gist of this uh, problem, which is how do you generate a 
tiny URL, which is as unique as possible. Let's see how many characters we need in our tiny URL. Before that, let's see what are the characters we can have in tiny URL. We can have A to Z, which is 26 characters. Then we can have uppercase A to Z, which is another 26 characters. And then we can have 0 to 9, which is 10 characters. This is total of 62 characters. So if my tiny URL is 7 character long, in that case I can have 62 raised to 7 combinations and this is approximately about 3.5 trillion combinations. If your service is generating 1000 tiny URLs per second, in that case it would take you 110 years to exhaust this 3.5 trillion combinations. On the other hand, if your service is uh, uh, generating million tiny URLs per second, then you'll exhaust this uh, 3.5 trillion in about 40 days. So if you're doing more requests per second, then you need to increase your number of characters in the tiny URL. For this video, we'll assume that our service is uh, supporting 1000 requests, th generating 1000 requests per second. So we are happy with 7 character long URL. Also notice that uh, any number from 0 to 3.5 uh, trillion can be represented by 43 bits. So next, let's see what are the different techniques to generate a 7 character long URL as unique as possible. These are some of the techniques to generate tiny URL. By no means this list is exhaustive, but it's going to give you a good idea on how to generate tiny URL. So before we go into the techniques, uh, let's talk about the database. What would the table schema look like? The table schema would have key as a tiny URL and value as the, long, the longer URL. And unless you need to add more features, this is more than enough for the table schema. So now let's first talk about the first technique. The first technique is to generate the tiny URL and then check the database. So what happens here is that you get a request from a user who says, hey, generate a tiny URL for my long URL. The worker host gets the request, then he generates a random tiny URL. After he generates random tiny URL, he could do one of the three things here. So the first thing he does is, he does a get on that tiny URL and checks to see if it already exists in that database or not. If that random tiny URL does not exist in a database, then he can put this tiny URL and longer URL into the database. Does this work? It, it works most of the time, but sometimes it won't work. Why? Uh, because after the worker is done getting the tiny URL and while he's putting the tiny URL and the long URL, another worker thread for another request could be putting the same tiny URL for some other long URL into the database and one of those uh, puts is going to win and it's going to corrupt the long URL for the other request. So a stable production system will not deploy this technique. Let's look at the technique number two. The technique number two is saying is that uh, put if absent into the database. So this requires support from the database. So here what is saying is that hey while you put this tiny URL and long URL into the database if there is no key whose value is equal to this tiny URL. So for relational databases like MySQL and Oracle who support full acid properties, atomicity, isolation, consistency, for them it's a trivial operation. For NoSQL databases, they might or might not support put if absent. So why would you use a NoSQL databases or a relational database? Because NoSQL databases scale really well compared to relational databases. On the other hand, some relational databases like Oracle is extremely expensive. So the technique number two works if you have database support. Let's look at the technique number three. What I'm doing here is, again, worker generates a random tiny URL. Then he puts this tiny URL and long URL into the database. Then he does a get of the tiny URL and checks if the longer URL attached with this tiny URL is same as the one which he puts. If that's the case, then he's done. Otherwise, he generates a new random tiny URL and puts that again and then does a get again to verify that the long URL matches or not. So he can uh, theoretically keep doing this infinitely until he finds a random URL which does not exist in the database or not. 
So if if the if the if the function generating random tiny URL is smart and it generates random it and the randomness is good, in that case it should not take more than one attempt to get this done. But the problem with this approach is there that for every put you are still doing at least one get or more get depending on if there is a collision or not. So this is uh, this is the three different ways if you generated a random tiny URL. Next, let's look at uh, the MD5 approach. In MD5 approach, we calculate the MD5 of the longer URL, then take the first 43 bits of that uh, MD5 and then use that to generate the tiny URL. What is an MD5? MD5 is a hashing function which generates 128 bit long hash. And out of that, we're gonna take the 43 bits and then generate tiny URL from that. So what is the probability of collision? There is a probability of collision. If you take more bits of that 128 bits, then the probability of collision will get lesser, but your tiny URL will get longer. On the other hand, if you take less bits of that 128 bits, then the probability of collision will get, uh, get more, but your tiny URL will get shorter. In our case, since we want to generate seven character long tiny URL, we will take 43 bits of that MD5. To be foolproof, what we're going to do is we're going to take these 43 bits, generate a tiny URL, and then apply our checking the database technique we discussed before. So what is the advantage of doing this over the random URL? So it has an advantage of saving some space in the database. Why? Suppose two users want to generate a tiny URL for the same long URL. In the first case, in the first technique, we would generate two random uh, tiny URLs, so there will be two rows in the database. In the second technique, both the longer URL will have the same first, uh, same MD5, so it will have the same first 43 bits, which means that we can get some deduping, which means that we'll end up saving some space uh, since we only need to store one row instead of two rows in the database. For the viewers who are not clear how this 43 bits will convert into uh, into seven character long uh, st uh, string, let me show that quickly. So 43 bits is what? Is zeros and ones. Suppose we have 43 bit long zeros and ones. So this is binary. You can convert this into decimal by uh, doing two raised to zero, two raised to one and adding them. So suppose this number comes out to be one million something something. Once you get this number, then all you have to do is convert that into base 62. So by base 62, it means that you divide it by 62 and percentage 62. This is same as you would convert this number into a binary, but instead of binary, you are converting into base 62. So when you convert this into base 62, you get numbers from 0 to 61. So it could be 60, 5, uh, 30, 0, something like that. Then what you do is then you map these uh, these characters to uh, then you map these numbers to characters. So remember we talked about our uh, our tiny URL will have a to z, a to z, and zero to nine. So what we could say here is a maps to zero, b maps to one, and and and, and then capital uppercase a maps to twenty six, and so on. So then we can take is that hey the sixty will be number eight and this 5 will be E, and then this 30 could be uh, uppercase D, and so on. So this way you can generate the tiny URL, uh, this way you can generate seven character long tiny URL from this 43 bits. So next let's talk about this counter-based approach. Counter-based approach has different ways to solve the problem. So first is a single host. So in a single host approach, a single host is responsible for maintaining a counter. This single host could be a database or it could be a Zookeeper instance. If you don't know what Zookeeper is, I highly recommend reading about it. So what happens here is that when worker hosts get a request to generate a tiny URL, they talk to this counter host, the host which is maintaining the counter, and he returns them this one unique number, and then he increments the counter internally, and when the next request comes, he returns him that number and then again increments the counter. So that way every worker host get a unique number and then they can generate this tiny URL based off that unique number. The problem with this approach is single point of failure and single point of bottleneck. 
So if this host went down, it might take some time for another host to take over his responsibilities. Also, it's possible that if the number of requests per second is extremely high, then this counter host might not be able to handle that kind of load. So then we move on to the second approach where every host internally tries to maintain this counter. So how would that work? So suppose we have uh, 64 uh, worker hosts. So how many bits do you need to represent a number from 0 to 63? You need 6 bits. So, so you assign unique 6 bits to every host. Then you take a current timestamp, which is 32 bits. So 6 plus 32 is 38, and we have 5 more bits to reach 43. So then you can add 5 bits of either random or incremental uh, or a random or incremental value so here uh, so here leading to total of 43 bits so in this case what is the probability of collision i would say pretty high if your number of requests is 1000 per second if the number of requests is 1000 per second it means that every worker thread is doing 20 requests per second so in a second this is not going to change this is not going to change this here can be total of uh, 30, can represent max of 32 numbers. And if you're doing 20 per second, there's a good chance that if you generated this randomly, you will have a very high, you will have a collision. Also, instead of generating it randomly, if you were just incrementing it, if you happen to have, do more than 32 requests per second, in that case also this will fail. Also, if you're adding hosts or removing hosts, worker hosts, then this will not be stable because now if you want to add a 65th host then you have to take out uh, uh, if you are at 65th host then you have to uh, then the 6 bits representation is not going to work so uh, so to make this work you have to pick more than 43 bits or you have to play some techniques where you use less uh, where you don't waste 32 bits on a timestamp but use some only parts of the timestamp and increase your randomness or your counter so uh, so this is all all host approach where every host is trying to maintain an internal counter but uh, it has a little bit higher probability of collision next let's look at a range based approach. remember when i said that uh, seven characters can generate up to 3.5 trillion combinations so range based approach tries to use as, as many combinations as possible and it scales really well so how does that work so first, so out of these 3.5 trillion combinations, we'll just worry about the first billion combination initially. So what we do is we take, uh, we divide this billion combinations into 1000 ranges of 1 million each. So first range will go from 1 to million, second range will go from uh, million 1 to 2 million, all the way till 1 billion and we'll have 1000 such ranges. And this information will be maintained in Zookeeper. And Zookeeper is highly available and durable. So uh, what happens is uh, worker threads or worker host, they come to Zookeeper and they say that, hey, give me an unused range. So when you start new, all the ranges will be unused up to a billion. Worker one will come. He will claim range one to thousand million. So this will be used, mark used. And then he will internally uh, whenever he gets a tiny, create a tiny URL request, he will internally work between in this one two million range. Keep incrementing. Uh, will maintain an internal counter. Keep incrementing, and keep generating a unique number, and then generate a tiny URL based off that. So worker two comes, he gets range uh, million one to two million, and so on. So what this does is it guarantees that there is no. Uh, there is no collision because all the all the worker hosts are working within a range. Any time, any point of time, they exhaust a range. What they could do is they could again come back to the zookeeper and say, "Hey, give me a new unused range." So the best thing here is that you could have worker th new, you could add new worker threads without worrying about where where they would go because a new worker thread would come in and he will just come in and say, "Hey, give me a new unused range." and Zookeeper can give him a new unused range. Also, let's say a worker thread dies in between. So 
all all it happens is that we ha we just lose that whatever he did not use we just lose uh, that many combinations and i think since in the worst case we are losing a million combination it's not a big deal because we have up to 3.5 trillion combinations to work with now when we have done using all the ranges till billion what we do is we say that hey our lower mark is now billion we do we have nothing or no combinations left uh, till billion so now we'll take 1 billion to 2 billion create another thousand such ranges and then this worker threads will work on those ranges so you can keep doing this until you reach 3.5 trillion combination uh, so this works really well as long as you have a service like Zookeeper which is able to maintain this configuration information there is one little uh, one little problem with this approach is that we are generating a URL in a sequential manner and suppose uh, some could say that this is a security threat because uh, because uh, because hackers can predict what the next what the next uh, URL would be so uh, to work around that uh, and all the counters based approach has that problem if there is no randomness so to work around that what we can do is we can uh, take uh, we can take the uh, we can take this uh, counter, this number, uh, unique number, and then add some random bits to the end of it, like let's say add another 10, 20, 10 15 bits at the end of it, and then uh, generate the tiny URL. So in this case, you will have 43 bits plus another 10 bits, so 53 bits, and then use those 50 bits, 3 bits to generate the tiny URL, in which case tiny URL will be of length 9 or 10 instead of 7. So this is, these are all the three techniques based on counter where you can generate, uh, where you can generate tiny URL. So finally, let's summarize all what we discussed about tiny URL. When create tiny URL request comes in, it goes to the load balancer. Load balancer picks one of the worker hosts, then the create URL goes to the worker host. The worker host, if he's working on a range based uh, counter, then he's going to see if his counter is exhausted or not. If it is exhausted, and he talks to the zookeeper, gets a new range, or based on that range, he has a new number, based on that number, creates a short URL, tiny URL, and then stores that tiny URL and the long URL into the database. At the same time, this worker is also going to store this data into a distributed cache. Why cache? Because the nature of business for tiny URL is that if you post a tiny URL on a Twitter, it's going to be accessed a lot initially and after two hours nobody's going to care about it so it's very important to cache the newly created tiny URL into a, some sort of a distributed cache. When the get request comes in, so when someone comes with a tiny URL, it again goes to the load balancer, from load balancer to worker thread, worker thread will first see if that information is there in a cache or not. If it is there then he's going to respond the long URL from the cache Otherwise, he's going to go to the database and try to get the long URL from there. Uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about is global usage. Suppose your, uh, suppose your this system, server system is in US, but let's say your users are, U are in Europe or in India or any other country around the world, then uh, how, do you, how do you work in that kind of system? For tiny URL specific use case, I think that the create URL can be slow, but the get URL get the longer URL for the short URL should be extremely fast. So what we do is for during the get URL you go all the way to uh, your request will go all the way to this server system you will put uh, you will create a tiny URL for that and then you will cache this tiny URL and long URLs in the CDN in your local country in your local city. So what happens next is that when the get comes in the get can be responded from that CDN itself. What is CDN? CDN is a content delivery network. I I would again ask you to read more about this. So this is all I have to talk about tiny URL. These are some of the terms which I used but I did not get chance to go deeper into it and maybe in a future video I might uh, look into them more. Again I'm looking back to your feedback specifically how you would have created tiny URL. Thanks for watching this video.